Hey everyone, this is a video of the bag I use for location sound recording with a Mix Pre 6. I love this little device, but to get it up to speed for working video shoots requires some creativity and extra accessories. So here's me rapidly unpacking the bag, and in a second here I'm going to pack it back up and walk you through the gear I use, which hopefully will be helpful if you are already working with a kit like this or thinking about building one of your own. So right here you can see my Mix Pre 6 tucked into the K-Tech Stingray Mix Pro bag, and I'll link to all this stuff below. One thing to note here is that I do not have the AA battery sled attached to the device. That gives me more room in the back of the bag and easier access to the SD card. So the first thing I hook up is this 8th inch to dual XLR cable into the stereo out jack. One of the compromises the Mix Pre series makes compared to other sound devices recorders is inputs and outputs. So most of the accessories I've added onto the Mix Pre are compensating for that. So I actually pull these XLRs through to the other side and that's because I'm going to use them with a breakaway cable that goes out to the camera. Uh, some shoots you're on, they're going to want to link up and you're going to send your audio directly into the camera. To do that, you use these breakaway cables that have two XLR connectors on this end and then a custom 10 pin breakaway here that attaches to a smaller cable, which I don't have in the video that the cameraman has on his or her rig. So this way you can kind of stay loose and then tether when you need to. So I put those XLRs into the XLR breakaway cable. And then the other jack there is the camera return. We're going to get to that in a second. Now these are my wireless receivers, the Electrosonics UCR411As. And to power this rig, I actually do the whole thing with a USB battery. So for the receivers, I actually use this custom cable from Adafruit. It's USB-A on one end and then DC on the other end. It takes standard USB-A output, which is 5 volts, and jacks it up to 12 volts. Uh, which will power these boxes. So I got the cable going here, and then there's the audio cable. I use these great ones with low profile connectors there. And then I take that and just thread it through so that the audio here goes out to the right side of the bag and the power goes out to the left. Um, because I don't have like a fancy power distribution system, I run all the power out to the left side of the bag, which you'll see is just way less crowded <laughs> than the right side of the bag where like everything ends up on the mix pre for whatever reason. Um, so same thing on this box, get your USB power cable in there, get your low profile XLR connector and thread everything through. You can see it's a little bit snug here, but once you get it in there, it's pretty much perfect. I'm pretty sure the bag was made to house just this setup so when you get it in there it's super tight and feels really dialed in. So now again just connecting my XLRs into one of the inputs, uh, input 1, and then I usually do left 2 on input 3 here on the other side. Once you have that all dialed in, the next thing we're going to set up is timecode. The Mix Pre 6 can do timecode but it can't really generate its own time code. So to do that and to keep your equipment in sync with other equipment on the production, you need this box called Tentacle Sync. This is one of them. Uh, it'll go into my machine and then there are other ones that you can send out to other cameras or even other recorders, any devices you're using to keep the production in sync throughout the day. So it has a little built-in piece of Velcro which you can attach to the inside flap here. It comes with these stereo 8th inch cables which you send in to the aux input, which is inputs five and six on the mix pre. Uh, I'm not gonna go into the settings and the device menus, but then you can just set your time code to external and it'll run off that tentacle sync. Okay, this box, the Sescom iPod AB switch. Christopher Russell, a guy on the Facebook mix pre group, turned me onto this thing. It's like 30 bucks. It's just an external AB switch. But with it, you can monitor camera return. Now, this wouldn't otherwise be possible because the Mix Pre doesn't have a dedicated input for this, and your auxiliary input is now being used for your time code. So you can use the Velcro to attach it to the outside of the device. I send a cable from my headphone jack into one of the inputs of this box. 
then the other input, you send the return from the camera, which is this little switch here from our breakaway cable, this little input here. Uh, that goes into the other side. And now you have a physical toggle that can take you between listening to camera return and what's going on in your box to make sure that those things are perfectly matched up and that the camera settings are right and that everyone's gonna be happy with the sound at the end of the day. So once those two things are set up, you get your headphones here and attach them to the bottom. I thought that this was gonna be annoying, but I actually kind of like it. It keeps the headphone cable also totally outside of the bag. So you have a lot of freedom of movement there um, and you don't have to worry about it getting snagged on other gear. Um, and so that's how you do camera turn. Now I've got my K-Tech coiled boom cable here. Um, not rocket science, you just take this thing and take it into input four. And now you've got this incredibly busy side of the bag totally complete here. So here's me plugging that in like a dope, getting in the frame. And yeah, now you can just seal this side of the bag up. So now we can head over to the left side of the bag where things are significantly more wide open to handle our power distribution. I use these Anchor USB-C batteries. They're one of the ones recommended by sound devices. And from them, we can power the Mix Pre and our wireless receivers. So the Mix Pre can be powered with USB-C. That goes in right there. And then our receivers have the USB-A ports to DC. So those go in right here. Oh, that's the right side. And the other one goes in right here. And now you've got your whole bag powered from this relatively inexpensive battery pack. And the battery life you can get on this is pretty significant. It's, you know, I'm not gonna say it's all day. You might have to switch at some point just to be safe, depending on if you're running both of your receivers all day. But again, you can get really significant battery life here. So you can see just uh, for purposes of demonstration that everything powers on. You can tuck these in that side of the bag if you want, but I actually usually end up tucking mine back into the fatter compartment there because it just seems to give it a little bit more room and puts less stress on the cable. So that's just a demonstration of that. But now you can totally close up this right side of the bag and you're done. So now the only things left to add in there are your wireless transmitters for your talent. I just clip those here onto the straps of the bag until those are ready to go. And then I've got two bags here with my Sankin lavalier microphones. Those fit super easily into the pockets there. Keep my V-clips in there. A spare battery just to make sure we don't run out of any juice. And yeah, that is the bag itself. Now, the final piece of this puzzle is the strap. I think the strap that this thing comes with is pretty gnarly. So this is a strap made by Peak Design. They're a camera company. It just snaps into these little um, kind of clips here that you loop around the strap D-rings. Clips in like that. It's much wider. It's much more adjustable. Feels way more comfortable. And you're good to go. Headphones, attach your boom, and uh, yeah, you're, uh, you're ready to shoot. So thanks for watching. Keep it tuned to this page for more videos like this, and uh, hit me up in the comments if you have any questions or want to know more. Thanks a lot.